Hey guys, Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Now before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides, not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. Alright guys, let's begin. Timmy's a nine-year-old male who plays on his school's soccer team. Recently, he has been getting very short of breath during soccer practice, so his mom took him to see his pediatrician. Timmy's doctor found that he has a significant heart murmur. Oh snap, what could it be, and what are the priority nursing interventions you must know for not only your tests, but ultimately the NCLEX? Today we're wrapping up cardiomyopathy, or what my mom calls cardiac mayonnaise. What happens when the cardiac muscle gets either too thin, too hard, or even just really big and thick? All leading to a weaker pump, meaning low cardiac output, aka low oxygen to the body. Now there are three different types of cardiomyopathy that affect the cardiac muscle. So we use the acronym Dr. H. D stands for dilated cardiomyopathy. So remember D for distended and thin heart muscles, kind of like a balloon. R is for restrictive cardiomyopathy. So remember R for rock hard, rigid cardiac muscle. And H is for hypertrophic. So remember huge trophy like, big and thick heart muscles. Now there are two categories of cardiomyopathy. It's either primary or secondary. Primary develops all by itself and secondary is usually caused by hypertension or some sort of valve disease. But before we further break down the causes, let's define what cardiomyopathy is. So the fancy medical definition of cardiomyopathy, cardio meaning heart, myo meaning muscle, and pathy meaning disease. So cardiomyopathy is a disease of the heart muscle, the myocardium, which inhibits effective pumping. Essentially, we have pump failure problems here, which again leads to this less cardiac output, basically meaning less oxygen to the body. So what's really going on in the body? Well, as you guys know, the heart acts like a pump pumping oxygen-rich blood out to the body from the left ventricle. Now the ventricles stretch as they fill with blood, and this is the end of diastole, called preload. And then, well, when they fill, they have to squeeze out all that oxygen-rich blood to the body. This is where they overcome all that pressure called afterload. Now the amount of oxygen-rich blood being pumped out of the heart to the body per minute is what's called cardiac output, all that blood coming out of the heart. It's when the heart cannot pump correctly when we get less cardiac output, meaning less oxygen-rich blood out to the body. And that's when we get loads of problems. So again, we're gonna review these one by one, but just again, little overview. Dr. H, D is for our dilated, distended cardiomyopathy. This is where the ventricles sort of balloon out and have very thin muscle walls, as you can see right here. Next is our restrictive, rock-hard cardiomyopathy. The ventricles get super stiff like a brick wall, and technically don't pump correctly. And H is for our hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, where the ventricles do the exact opposite. They beef up and get really thick and hard like a big, huge trophy. So let's start with the first one, dilated, which I call distended cardiomyopathy. Now this guy is the most common out of our three wise men here. Here we have distended muscle walls where the chambers in the heart are being stretched out like a saggy, loose sock, leaving us with big, stretched out chambers and really loosening up the valves so they don't close all the way. This results in a weaker contraction, basically not an effective pump or no effective systolic squeeze for our blood pressure. And this leads to pump failure, specifically systolic heart failure, where the blood doesn't go forward and now it backs up into the lungs and or body. And when blood backs up, again, this means less blood being pumped out of the heart to the body. And again, this is called less cardiac output, meaning less oxygen to the body. As a result, the body thinks we have low blood pressure. So the body attempts to increase this blood pressure by stimulating the sympathetic nervous system to increase the heart rate. It also attempts to increase the blood pressure by stimulating the kidneys to initiate the renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. Fancy words for the RAS system which results in the kidneys holding on to the fluid, which increases blood pressure. But over time, these compensatory mechanisms can no longer maintain cardiac output and the heart begins to fail. So we're gonna see classic heart failure signs and symptoms, all revolving around low oxygen signs and symptoms from this low cardiac output. So low oxygen in the brain will see syncope as well as mental status changes. Now exams in the NCLEX love to really emphasize that restlessness and agitation is the earliest signs of hypoxia. So guys, write that down. Restlessness and agitation are usually the first signs that indicate low oxygen. But we'll also see in the heart, angina and ECG dysrhythmias, or basically a heart block. And for the respiratory tract, we'll see shortness of breath called dyspnea, 
so you'll see rapid shallow breathing. And now as far as heart failure signs and symptoms, blood fails to pump forward and now starts to back up in the body and or the lungs. So if blood backs up on the left side of the heart, remember L for left means L for lungs. We hear wet crackles inside the lungs known as pulmonary edema. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right guys, see you next time.